Well, we are in the Apocalypse series, and traditionally the Apocalypse means something bad, right? So I'm here to make you think of things differently. Um, the Apocalypse, the word means to reveal something. So today I am going to reveal something to you guys about the movie Chappie, which is an R-rated movie. And how many of you think that we can learn something from an R-rated movie? That's about like half of you, so I'm gonna have to convince the other half of you as we go through the rest of this. Um, how many of you have seen the movie Chappie? That's less than half of you, so that's about a quarter of you. So uh, this is gonna be full, full of spoilers, so you've already been warned a week ahead of time. You only have yourself to blame. And, um, well, let's show you a, a trailer from, well, it's my favorite trailer from the movie Chappie, and then this will sum up what I'm trying to, to get to you. To this world. A machine that can think and feel. fearful of something they don't understand. The problem with artificial intelligence is it's way too unpredictable. You know what's a black sheep? No. It's like when you different to everyone else. You told us so much more than I could ever imagine. We're gonna make you cool and tough. Don't laugh, I'm being cool. This robot is going to be removed. He's just a kid. He could be the next step in the evolution. I am consciousness. I am alive. I am Jeppy. I don't know about you guys, but that still speaks to me on a, a Christian level. Um, I'll, I'll summarize what the movie Chappie is about, if you didn't get it from that trailer. Uh, there's a... The setting is uh, Johannesburg in South Africa, and there's a lot of crime, so this uh, company called Tetraval creates these uh, scout robots to be the automated police force. And the creator of the scout robots is uh, Dion Wilson, and you may know him from Slumdog Millionaire. And his rival is Hugh Jackman, who you may know from the Wolverine and X-Men movies. Um, Hugh Jackman wants a larger, bigger, more militarized robot to be controlled by a human to police Johannesburg. And uh, the slumdog millionaire is more interested in creating artificial intelligence. So when Scout 22 gets injured in the line of duty and has to be uh, uh, scrapped, he sees this opportunity to put his a program of artificial intelligence that he's been working on into this uh, literally trashed and discarded scout. And from then on, the scout is consciousness, he's alive, he's learning, and he's introduced to this world of crime and uh, violence with his, uh, by default to his two surrogate parents Ninja and Yolani, Yolandi. Uh, they teach Chappie uh, the bad stuff, sort of. How to hurt people and how to get money illegally. 
And through this process, the voice of his creator is still in the back of his mind saying he can't harm anybody, use guns, or do crimes. And so Chappie is torn between what his creator wants and what he's learned. And then through some more uh, action sequences and wonderful special effects, we get a climax that leads between a showdown between uh, Chappie and the big, violent, uh, other robot alternative to policing. And all this time, the, the damaged chassis that Chappie is in, uh, he got hit with an RPG in his uh, torso area, which fuses the battery into the, the body and can't be recharged, removed, replaced, or repaired. So in a sense, Chappie is put into a dying body. And at the end, he chooses to, to save the people he loves. And, well, the alternate ending, which I find better than the theatrical ending, is that he downloads himself into all the other scout robots. And there is a new form of life that is uh, now on Earth. Um, so that's Chappie in like a minute. So why did I choose this? this why did I choose this movie as opposed? Last time I did uh, the movie Up, which to me was very by the book and simple. Well, with Chappie, I wanted to challenge myself and also challenge you guys. So um, let's go back in time a little bit and let's talk about what happens when information is communicated in the before things were written so that would be in the prehistory area um, if we were talking about something in the Bible let's say something similar to the Good Samaritan somebody traveling along the road to their destination gets robbed right and this person is poor. They're going to tell their peer, who's also poor, that I was robbed of a dollar because that person knows the value of a dollar. But if they're traveling after they've been robbed and they encounter somebody else, like a rich person, and they're asking for a handout, they're more than likely going to say, I was robbed of $1,000 or $10,000. Because a dollar doesn't mean the same thing to the rich man than it does to the poor person. So back then, story was used to more or less convey an emotion rather than telling the facts. So with Chappie, I would say Chappie is us. We are given a choice of what life to lead. And in the, the trailer, he's uh, given a storybook that describes um, what it is to be different. In the, in the story, he's, it's described as a black sheep. And in a world of, what, uh, the last time I remember the, the world population was something like six billion or something. I guess that's the last time I really cared what the, the, that number was. But I'm sure it's gone up to like 100 trillion by now. So um, in a world of 100 trillion, how is it that each one of us has felt lonely? Doesn't that seem on paper, scientifically, logically, irrational? And yet, this is a universal truth that each of us has felt lonely at once in our life. And so Chappie is us in that he is unique, he is different, he is not like anything else in that world. Another thing in the movie is that um, they distinguish Chappie from looking different because every, every of the scouts is uh, like a dark blue. They make him different by attaching a, a, an, an orange ear to him. And so that's how you know he's different visually. Because at that moment, we don't know that Chappie is different on the inside. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it reads, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for wel welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. So Chappie's creator, the Slumdog Millionaire, wants the best for Chappie. He doesn't want uh, Chappie to grow up in the slums of Johannesburg. He, uh, 
He wants Chappie to learn, to evolve. But sometimes plans don't go um, as they're planned. Just like that sentence. Because from the moment we're born, we're already dying. I don't know how many of you have thought of that, but with the song, Do You Realize, it brings a lot of these truths to the, the forefront. Like a hundred years, we're gonna get all new people. All the people we know today in a hundred years are gonna be gone. So we all know that we're gonna die someday, just like Chappie. He, he doesn't have, we don't have an extra battery or an extra body to replace our, in, within ourselves to live longer. So, in a sense, we're all uh, decaying in our, I would call these bodies, spacesuits. Just like in the song, we're all traveling in space and our bodies are decaying spacesuits. So our time on Earth is very limited. And so that's why Chappie's experiences are very important because he has a, a limited amount of time. But before he learns of his mortality, he thinks like most of us do when we're, when we're younger. Here's a quote from the movie. I'm titanium, I'm invincible. Uh, his surrogate father, Ninja, responds, you're broken. He, referring to the creator, put you in a broken body. Chappie responds, my maker loves me. Why would he do that? He wouldn't do that. How many times have we felt angry at God for putting us in these decaying spacesuits? These are things that I see in the movie that we all experience in life. And the movie does a good job of bringing these things up to the surface, but doesn't go a little deeper. And so I'm just gonna do the same and pose these questions to you because these are, these are questions that I can't answer for you. We all have to find the answers for ourselves, just like Chappie does. He has to choose which path to follow. So do we choose the material to, to pursue material goods, money, wealth? just the way Chappie falls in with the gangsters and looks uh, for the next heist? Or do we want more? Do we want to go to the other place in the, in the, in the story that his, uh, his surrogate mother reads him? A story that um, echoes in James 4:14. 4, Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. That's something that happens to all of us, like I said before, a hundred years, all new people. That sounds depressing, but it's what we do with that time that makes, makes it special. Okay, so Chappie is us, um, and the bad guys, well, the specific bad guy in this movie is Wolverine, because he rejects that, um, Technology can't think for itself that technology has to be controlled by a human. And he has this, um, this helmet device that lets him control this big uh, hulking robot. And so the introduction of Chappie that is something different from his mindset makes him, he rejects it completely. And I would say that Wolverine in this movie is, is hatred, is is um, the, the unacceptance of the other, whether that's race, sexual preference, um, homelessness, the unwanted, the other, the people on the fringe. That's really what the bad guy in our lives is. Because I think it takes too much to hate, to hold a grudge or to be mean. It's easier to love. And I think that's a great example of what Chappie does, is he, he accepts both what his creator set out for him on the onset, 
but then is also accept, ac accepting of uh, his parents who are, who are not the most upstanding citizens. And through his journey, we, we kind of get, we, we get the paradigm shift of that the, the bad guys were actually rooting for them to, to make it through um, their, their, their lives because their livelihood is, uh, is built around crime. And so what goes from the norm is that these people commit crimes, they're bad. But then once we get to know them, they care for this robot and they kind of want to teach him like the hard knocks life of what it is to live in Johannesburg. And through that, they're not so much the bad guys. Um, and then at the, the very end, the Chappie's creator is shot and he, he, his body is it, bleeding. And, and Chappie de invents this thing that allows him to transfer consciousness into another one of the, the robot scouts. And on, on the surface level, it's just Chappie and his creator both in new robot bodies. So they've achieved immortality. But to me, that speaks on a Christian level that we become one with our creator. And to me, that's, that's our goal. Our, that should be our main goal is to just run the race and to get to, get to the, our creator, our God, and to be one with him in heaven. Um, and that reminds me of Ecclesiastes 12.1. Remember your creator in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you say, I find no pleasure in them. So Chappie is able to not only welcome everything that's been proposed to him, but he's also able to become one with his creator. And I wish that we as human beings and even more so as Christians, could do the same. Because the whole, I would argue that the Holy Land isn't in Israel or the Middle East, but it's the table where the door is open for everybody. The moment is really what's holy. And just like was read earlier, all are welcomed here. And I, and I hope that this is something that we can ascribe to and practice in, in, our, in, our, in our own lives because um, all we have is the moment. Tomorrow, uh, yesterday is, go is already gone. There are things that we all feel regretful of, but we can never go back because time travel technology has not been invented yet. Uh, so we don't have that anymore. That's, that's gone. All we have is now, and sometimes tomorrow might not be here because of any number of things in this world. I mean, if you're driving in L.A., you're literally taking your life into your own hands. So I, I think that's what really speaks to me is that Chappie does what he needs to do. He needs to find a way to get uh, out of this broken body. And that's his ultimate goal. And similarly, we have broken bodies, not only physically, but I would argue mentally. We have to kind of unlearn some of the things we've learned. Just like Jesus challenged the, the norm in society at the time, he, he said to love your enemies where before it was, these enemies are, your uh, are the bad guys, they killed so-and-so, so you have to do likewise because that's just the way it's done. And he challenged us to, to love your enemy, to, to turn the other cheek. Uh, when he came, he, they, when he came to uh, the people at the time, they, they wanted uh, a conquering king 
with an army to, to destroy Roman rule. But he came saying, now it's up to you. We have to, um, we have to win the hearts and minds rather than uh, what, land, force, uh, armies. We can't, we can't conquer those things because there'll just be another one to come, come along. Um, and I don't know how many of you in the hustle and bustle of Los Angeles live your lives in the moment because during the work week I'll, I'll wake up and I'll think okay I'll, I, can, I can do these set of tasks today and I can set this for, aside for tomorrow sometimes we may, we may not have tomorrow um, so I want, I want you guys to think of a time when you've You've lived in the moment. You've, you've, you've done what maybe it's, I would think of an example, maybe like an impulse buy or a spur of the moment thing, something you were spontaneous on. So think about that and I'll tell you mine. I was uh, going on a flight and I, it's, you have to get to the airport like hours ahead of your flight to check in and, and do all this stuff. And uh, I got hungry, like uh, I hope all of us get hungry, because if not, you have some secrets to tell us. So I went to, I, I think it was a subway, and they, you know how subway works, they, you tell them what you want and they make it for you. So I went up to one of the, the subway shops in the airport and I, they ask, the first thing they ask you is what kind of bread do you want? And I said, oh, I don't know, banana nut. And they said, we don't have that. I said, well, go get it. And then they asked, uh, what cheese do you want? And I said, mm, cottage cheese. I said, we don't, mm, banana nut, bread, cottage cheese, turkey sandwich. That's what I ordered. I felt like doing something completely ridiculous and spontaneous in the moment. And so they served me with uh, grimaces and furled brows, a banana nut bread, cottage cheese, turkey sandwich. I took that onto the plane and the person next to me had a nut allergy. But it was so, so bad that she couldn't even have the nuts or the peanuts in the air. So uh, the flight attendant asked me to, to eat my sandwich in the restroom. <laughs> so I said, okay. Because at that moment, I just wanted to enjoy this unique sandwich that nobody else in this world had created. And that story is a lie because I am conveying to you an emotion, not the facts. And so that's what I think movies do for us, is that they convey emotions that we are unable to, to experience on day-to-day -day life. How many of us are gonna be dodging bullets, running from robots, or, or befriending a robot? I would say none of us. So we go to these movies to experience a heightened sense of reality, to hear a story, just in the way that Jesus told parables as a way of conveying an emotion, a message. These are our stories, and I submit to you that I, you can find a message from God in an R-rated movie if you're looking for it. Because in Matthew it says, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. So how many of us are seeking these things and knocking on these doors? Um, I, I pray that the Apocalypse series is something that you can enjoy because it's out of the norm. And um, I just think that it's, it's too, too short of a lifetime to spend on hating things and, and spitting out venom where, like Bill mentioned earlier, we changed uh, a profile picture of our church and everybody has their own opinion. And through the internet conversations, 
a lot of the, uh, the tone and the emotion I was getting from some of the comments was more of hate. I mean, how many times have, has something changed in your life because somebody has come and attacked you with something, saying, this is my way, this is better? The old saying goes, you can attract more flies with honey. I'm not sure why you would want to attract flies, but the message and the emotion of that story is true. Jesus was, was kind in the way he, he spoke. He was never turning away anybody. He was listening to everybody. He was eating with everybody. He was, he was there whenever somebody came to him. Even when the disciples turned away the little children, he said, no, bring them to me. Um, so there are universal truths that I find in the movie Chappie that I guess now you don't have to see because I've already spoiled it for you. But I would challenge you to look at other movies the, the same way because when people say that God is everywhere, I truly believe that. Um, that's why we, we, we had uh, that song, Do You Realize, as somber and as, and as maybe depressing as some of those lyrics are, it's true. And that's one of my favorite songs. Is that, is that wrong? Is that right? No, it's, it just is. Like, what is, what is the most famous romantic story? Romeo and Juliet. How does it end? It ends in tragedy. These are things that are true and we don't think about. I would, I mean, at, at the end of the day, the movie Chappie, to me, is about living your life to the fullest because your battery percentage is reaching zero. And you can't plug it in with your adapter. You can't uh, do, like, plug in a... Um, uh, what's that called? One of those uh, batteries that you carry around that you plug into your phone. You, you, can't, you, you, you don't have that. What you're given is what you're given. And it's, it's what you do with that that, that that speaks to your creator. Because when you're, when you're going to be brought at the end to your creator, is he going to say, job well done, or, or I don't know you? Um, and I hope that that's something that we all aspire to, is to be one with our Creator and to run, run that race. Um, and, and like Chappie, I hope that we can practice a, an attitude of welcoming, of, of learning, of listening. So when you're on, on your morning commute or your afternoon commute, I don't, I don't know what your sleep cycles are like, but I hope that you're you're welcoming to, to the driver that doesn't signal, that cuts you off. I hope you're welcoming to the person trying to make that left turn where it's, it's one of those suicide lanes and you let them in, you wave them through, you, you welcome them because at that moment, they're just a driver, they're a commuter, they're not, they're not a different race than you, they're not a different religion than you, they're not they're not anything different than you. At that time, we're all commuters on the highway. And what more will it be if, if you let somebody see a little bit of kindness by, by flagging them through into your lane? And who cares if they, don't, if they don't return the gesture of a wave, thank you, in return? How many times have we done that where you let somebody through and they don't do anything? I bet you there's a couple of us that have said some expletives because they didn't return the fa uh, they didn't acknowledge that you were gracious to let them in. But I say that that's not the point. You're living in that moment. In that moment, you showed kindness. And I think that's what ultimately matters. And so today we practice uh, communion. And here at Hollywood, uh, we we practice an open table. We're, we are welcoming of everybody who wants to participate. Um, and yeah, just like the, the early Christians did, we'll eat together as small of a morsel of sacraments. They, might, they may be, 
but we will eat together at a table where everybody is gathered and and sing a song and and it won't be it won't be uh, sad like do you realize but it'll be a it'll be a good song um so i hope uh we can see you all here for the other uh, apocalypse series they're almost done um so yeah i hope you had a good time and i guess i'll see you guys at the movies <laughs> <laughs>